This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so we've gone through and had a look how to calculate the percentage complete. But as I said in that previous short video, we're normally given the percentage complete within the question, which is what we have within this question. Here, within this question, we are told that within this contract, it is the 70% complete. Okay, uh, you could use the output method, you could use the input method, but here we're told. Now, again, the focus on this example and the following example is we're going to focus on the statement of financial position because that's regularly where you see revenue. It's the only place where you see revenue. But once we've gone through and understood how to recognize the amounts within profit or loss in relation to whereby the stage of completion is over time, then we'll then move on afterwards to start look at how it impacts your statement of financial position. OK, so you'll see that in this example, it wants us to look at how this contract will be dealt with. Within that statement of profit or loss for our reporting date, there is it December 20 X five. OK, uh, so what have we got? Uh, it says that Alex commenced the three year building contract, so we know that we're going to have to re recognize any revenue and costs based on a stage of completion over time. Uh, and that was started during December X4. So that was in the previous accounting period. So we have a three year contract started in X4. We're looking for what happens in X5. OK, so things will already have been recognized in the previous year in X4. What do we need to recognize there with regards to X5? Uh, it goes through there and tells us as you look at the information. So we've got some figures there in millions. Uh, we're given the total contract value. So effectively to you and I, that is the total revenue okay, uh, that we're going to get from this contract over the three years. Uh, it says the costs incurred to date. Uh, at X5. So, you know, that says to date to X5. So that is effectively what you have incurred for X4 and X5. OK, because this contract is progressing over three years. We're effectively into the second year of the three. So what will have been incurred in the first year X4? What will have been incurred in the second year X5? Well, it tells us in total that there is 20 million dollars. Uh, we're also told the estimated cost to complete uh, are there at 12. So what we could go through and do, and this is important when we get to scenarios like that, uh, we can work out whether or not this contract is profit making. It's very important to identify whether or not the contract is making a profit or whether it is making a loss because the accounting treatment will ultimately be ever so slightly different. Uh, we're also told that the work certified as complete in 20x5 is $15 million. So effectively, that is what we are told is the revenue for this year. In this year, in X5, the amount that we have completed in relation to revenue, it's been certified by a quantity surveyor, is there at 15 million. So that figure there. is going to appear in our statement of profit or loss for this year because it's looking at the year ended December X5. So in that year ended December X5, 50 million has been certified. Uh, we're told that 70 percent has been completed. Uh, and then the key bit, the profit recognized to date. At 20 X4, so what has already been recognized, i.e. in that previous year. is three point three million dollars. OK, so, so how does that all fit together? Well, let's go through that. The first thing I'd do in any of these type of questions is you need to look at the contract and to see whether or not it is profit or loss making. Uh, so whether it's profit or loss making the way in which I would do it, and you can remember these as pro formas if you like.
is that we would need to look at the total revenue less the total cost. That, that's how you work out a profit or loss, isn't it? Revenue less costs. But we're looking at it in total because then if we have a profitable contract, we can then split that profit uh, over the years of the contract based upon our stage of completion. If it's loss making, we can do something ever so slightly different based upon the accounting principles of prudence. OK, uh, so here, what have we got? We're looking at millions of dollars Well, the total revenue to date. Was 45 million. Uh, so if you're looking for your numbers, you've got it there. Total contract value. Total. Revenue is 45 million. And then when you're looking at your total costs, you've got to be careful here because we need to look at our costs. To date. And our costs are complete. So again, here are cost to date. I think we're 20. Our cost to complete, well, there is 12. So when you go through there and do 45 less 20 less 12, is that the has 13 million. So that is our total profit. It's that total profit that then needs to be recognised over the life of the contract so here it's three years you could quite simply just say right done one year done two years uh so we're, we're two thirds of the way uh we must have recognized one third last year we'll recognize another third this year that's not too accurate within within the financial statement is it it needs to go through there and accurately reflect the progress that has been made on this contract and the progress that is being made on this contract if you like what I like to refer to as your stage of completion. Uh, in this question here, your stage of completion is there at 70%, isn't it? You can just see it there. So the stage of completion is at 70% and we have a profitable contract. So what we're going to go through and do that is that as we have a profitable contract at 70% completion, we are going to go through that and recognize your profit based upon that 70%. So therefore, at, is it December X5, then it will be, let me get this right, 70% of 13 million, is that the, at 9.1 million dollars. That's $9.1 million that we will have recognized up to the end of X5. So that the is what's going to be recognized in X4 and X5 in total. We need to work out from the statement of profit or loss perspective what is just going to be recorded in X5. Because remember, the statement of profit or loss is for the period ended so it's going to show us that 12 month period from the 1st of December x5 to the 31st of December x5 so once we've done that we can then go through and look at the statement of profit or loss again what I do is I would look at my revenue I would look at my costs I would look at my profit uh, and what I would do there is I would look at it cumulatively uh, so at this point in time uh, so effectively that's looking cumulatively for x4 
and x5, isn't it? Uh, I then go through and have a look at what's happened. In previous years so here that's looking at what's happened in x4 and then I can look at the current year which is x5 because what I'm gonna have to go through and do is when I've got the cumulative figures I'm then gonna have to deduct what there's been in prior years to get me to my current year figure which is then what appears on the statement of profit or loss okay so what information have we got? Well, we're told, well, we've calculated that the profit cumulatively for X4 and X5 is that $9.1 million, isn't it? Okay. Uh, what we're told as well within the question, if we go back into the question, we can see there that the profit recognised in the prior years up to 20X4 is 3.3. So that's the amount of profit that we recognised in X4, i.e. last year. So this year, what we need to recognise on the statement of profit or loss is 5.8 billion. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Sure. All I've gone through and done is the 9.1 less the 3.3 gives me the 5.8. Because what we calculated... In terms of the profit recognition at 70% was everything in total for X4 and X5. We've seen or we've been given what happened in X4. We just want X5 so that that can then feed in to the statement of profit or loss. So therefore we're showing 5.8 million. Uh, how much revenue are we going to recognise? Well, that's going to be based upon my work certified, which is the 15 million. And then the way in which it would work is that my costs would be there as a balancing figure at 9.2 million. Okay. So what you would do is within any exam question, the 15 million of revenue will get added to whatever revenue has been recognised already for, from other revenue sources. And then those costs will get recognised. Is it there? within your cost of sales, okay? Uh, so what I do is before you move into the next example, have a work through that example first. Make sure that you're happy with it. If you do have any questions, throw them on the Ask the Tutor forum. Otherwise, once you've done that, I'll see you in the next short video. And that's going to go through there and start to look at a similar scenario, but whereby that contract is not profit-making. Bye for now.